Okay, so here we have a species that you might recognize, you might actually even know the name, you just know it. You see it around in plantings, uh, and it kind of uh, invokes to me sort of New York and sort of Canada, like more northern areas. Uh, it's not very common in the mid-Atlantic. We are here kind of on the southern end of its, of its main range in northern Pennsylvania and high elevations in northern Pennsylvania. This is white birch, uh, or paper birch. Um, uh, Bichula papyrifera. Uh, it is called that because it has these sheets of bark that will come off that look, you know, a lot like paper. Um, and this is, again, what you've probably noticed, what you've probably seen around in plantings, um, is this, uh, this sloughing off bark here. Pretty cool. Um, and it has very distinctive uh, bark. You almost don't need to look at the leaves at all. Um, and I actually kind of feel that way with a lot of birches. A lot of our birches look really similar uh, to each other to me in their leaves, um, but the bark is where you're gonna see the variation that's gonna help us tell, you know, what species we have here. So white birch, obviously, super white bark, and, you know, paper birch has that papery uh, sheaths that come off, but um, very white in color, especially when it's younger, it kind of gets a darker gray as it ages, but it's really easy to see that white color. Um, and then if you scrape away a little bit more, and we kind of saw it on the underside of that little bit, you get more of an orangish color. Um, these long kind of slits here are lenticels, which are gas exchange pores. And that's very distinctive that we have such wide um, and distinctive uh, uh, lenticels here um, in our white birch. We have very visible lenticels in a lot of our birches, but again, uh, against that white color, very distinctive. The, the leaf is very birch looking. Uh, there's a little bug on the lens there. Um, uh, very deltoid in shape. Uh, and uh, yeah, just kind of looks like a birch leaf, right? Serrated leaf edge. Um, it is a little uh, uh, hairy, uh, light pubescence on it. Um, but again, nothing really, you know, super distinctive. Just looks like a birch leaf to me. Uh, deltoid in shape. Um, thinking of the ecology of the species, this is a pioneer species. Um, so it's going to come in in areas of disturbance, usually wildfire, areas of catastrophic wildfire. It'll come in and it'll start to take off. It's a short-lived species. Doesn't really get very big. As you can see, you know, a lot of these are starting to senesce. They're getting, you know, older and starting to die out. We are in an area that I'm not certain but, you know, if I had to guess, I would say there was likely a catastrophic wildfire that burned through here really, really bad. Um, you know, maybe 50, 70 years ago, somewhere in there, the white birch started to move in, dominated the area, uh, took over, um, did really well, regenerating in that open area on the good soil here. Um, and then over time, shade started to come in and we're starting to get other things regenerating in the understory. This understory is actually mostly red maple and service berry. Um, and so the composition of these woods are going to start to change unless a, a big fire comes through and wipes all this stuff out to allow the white birch to regenerate on the more disturbed site. Um, uh, so um, it is not really a, a super, partly because it's so ephemeral, doesn't live very long, doesn't get very big, not a super valuable species commercially. Again, really common for ornamental plantings, really beautiful bark. Um, it does have some niche uses. It has kind of like a lighter wood, um, so it can be used for kind of like small little, you know, lighter things, toothpicks I've heard, things like that. Um, and like a lot of birches, it is providing for grouse and uh, a lot of birds and rodents and things like that to eat the, the buds and the seeds, things like that. But there you have it, white birch, really cool to see, just a beautiful species um, and uh, unique uh, to me, uh, you know, mostly being in the mid-Atlantic. It's a real treat to be able to see it here in these high elevation forests uh, where it kind of feels, you know, more northerly.